This program does not represent the views of this station and may be considered offensive to some listeners. This program may contain mature subject matter, including frank discussions of controversial topics. It is intended for mature, open-minded audiences. Discretion is highly advised. This program is entirely independently produced by and is copyrighted by Frank 2005. It is broadcast here under license. You're listening to Frank Talks Pleasures and Lifestyles, and I'm Frank because I have to be. On today's show, we're talking to a gentleman by the name of Michael. He's also known as the Dating Wizard. He was featured at the 2006 Cliffs List Convention, and he was also a local Toronto seduction guru involved with the Toronto Suns. Uh, get a Relationship Challenge, and he'll be talking about that a little bit later on in the show. Frank Talks welcomes... Michael, the Dating Wizard. Hello, Michael. Hello, thank you. All right, let's go in with our very first question. Where were you born? And tell me everything that happened to you while you were growing up that eventually led you to becoming a seduction guru. Okay, I was born right here in Toronto, and uh, I grew up really conservative, and uh, probably not that different from a lot of kids, but my parents are, uh, they came from uh, Eastern Europe, and the very strict type of attitude, and the idea was, you know, we came here, so try to do something with your life, because, you know, it wasn't so easy where we came from. And so, basically, I just focused on my schoolwork, went to an all-boys school, and uh, thought that's just the way it is. I didn't really start thinking about girls, obviously, until, like, you know, 11, 12, 13. But around that age, I started thinking to myself, you know, the... the there's something here that that I would really love to get closer to, and I wasn't even allowed to. So what happened was, slowly, I started to realize that I was going to have to get away from the kind of group and friends and school that I was that I was in. And when I was about 17, I switched from uh, like a private school, very conservative, uh, not co-ed, to public school for the first time. And up until that very point in time, my complete picture of reality with women had come from movies because I had never really had interactions with girls before. I didn't even think that there was such a thing as like social group pickup. I thought it was like in the movies, James Bond, you go up to the girl, you, you, you do something, you say something, and then like that's how you get her. Like I, I didn't even know that there was any other way of meeting girls, but I, had no, I didn't really know how to do it. I just figured that there's something about you picking the girl. So from an early age, this was the picture I had. And then in high school, I would go up to a girl that I liked. I didn't really have, like, my heartbeat would be pounding. I'd be sweating. I'd be pounding. But I, I, I would do it. But I just wouldn't do the right thing. And so I would just try harder and harder. I remember, I really remember this. I'm sure every guy has this uh, memory, too. But there's, like, that one girl in high school that you're just totally crazy about. Anyway, for me, this was completely, completely true. And uh, so I would go to the library, and I would read all the books on relationships, and I would read all the magazines. I'd even read, like, my sister's magazines, you know, like mm -hmm. the women's magazines. And it would talk about communication and making sure that she understands what you're saying. And, and I would hear how girls would talk about, especially this girl, how most guys are, are, are jerks. And I thought to myself, well, I swear I would never be a jerk, you know? I would never be that guy. And I would... And I would try to talk to her and show I'm interested in everything she's saying. And nothing worked. And, and I just thought, well, you know, because I was brought up to be a, a go-getter and never to give up. So just, there's just something I, I haven't done, you know. i got to show her that I mean it. So I'd come by her locker every day. I'd come by her classroom, you know. And then, like, you know, a year later, I'm still following her around. It's crazy. It's almost like stalking her, but not in a bad way. And I would find she'd take an after-school course and... And then I'd see her, like, kind of ha flirting with some other guy in her class. And I'm like, well, what's going on over there? Is that, could it be she's interested in some other guy, even though I'm there? No, no, can't be, you know? Anyway, the fast forward, that was a horrible experience for me. It was really one of the worst experiences in my life. I was obsessed with this one girl for about, like, three years. Mm -hmm. I, can, I can totally relate. I know exactly where you're coming from. A lot of us have... Uh 
had that passed as well. Yeah, the, it was the, really, really bad. And, and then I went to university thinking, like, I really wasn't over the high school chick, but I figured, okay, it's the university. And I thought, okay, time for a fresh start, you know? And I remember being in this natural science class right here in Toronto, a university called York, York University, and sitting in the back of the class in the first year where it's, it's a humongous class, like hundreds and hundreds of students. So I can literally check out every girl <laughs> in the entire lecture hall. And I thought to myself, and I finally saw this one chick near the front of the class, and I thought, man, she is beautiful. And, and I thought, hey, you know, maybe it's possible that I can finally be rescued <laughs> from that other chick because this chick is so good. And again, I didn't have a problem approaching. Like, my heart's pounding. I went up to her right after class, I remember, thinking to myself, this is the only way that I'll ever get anywhere. i got to go up to them and talk. And I went up to her, and I go, like, hi, uh, you know, I was sitting all the way in the back, and I'm just like, you're amazing. <laughs> I swear, it was almost word for word, something like that. And, you know, hey, look, it was better than doing nothing. She goes, oh, hi, you know, I'm Julia. And she kind of, you know, shakes my hand. And I'm like, I don't, I don't know, what do you do next? <laughs> and uh, and I would keep on talking to her after school or after class, trying to make conversation, like rapport. Like, hey, so what do you think of that teacher? And it seemed to be going, like, not too bad. But then, like, seven months later or eight months later when the year is over, I get a note from her saying, oh, hi, I didn't mean to lead you on, you know, but I'm, but I'm actually getting married to so many <laughs> I'm laughing now. Again, it was, it was horrible at the time. But um, it was a really rough upbringing. I really was not great with girls, to put it mildly. I, I want to make an observation here. It, it sounds like, and I, you know what, I'm going to form this in the, the form of a question. Did you, when did you get your first official date? My first official, well, I think the big question there is a date with a girl that I actually liked Yeah. or a date. Okay, both. Yeah. So I remember, like, back in the high school thing, when I was thinking to myself, well, you know, it's never going to pan out with uh, with this chick, so maybe everyone keeps on telling me, you got to move on, you got to move on. So I'm like, like, I didn't feel like it, because I wasn't attracted to any other chick. But I felt, okay, maybe if I try it, I'll feel it. So I went to this barbecue, it's kind of a university barbecue, uh, like before the, the first year of university started, the students had sent out an email about some barbecue. And I went to the thing, and there was a chick there. But I didn't think she was nearly as great as the one that I was crazy about. But I thought, you know, she wasn't bad. And, and the funny thing is, is I guess because, um, I don't know, maybe a combination of the fact that uh, I was not thinking she was the greatest thing, so I was more relaxed, or, or maybe she wasn't so good at the game. Anyway, I got her number and everything. I remember going out with her, and a lot of guys <clears throat> that around me were saying, hey, you know, she's really cute, and I'm thinking... You know, the funny thing, thing is, like, I, I, I just didn't feel it for her. Like, I, I felt a bit of the sexual chemistry, but I didn't feel anything close to what I'd felt for that other girl. And uh, so, you know, th there's no fun in being with a girl that you don't actually feel attracted to, no matter what every other guy says. All right, and then tell me about your first date. How old were you when you finally got the, your first date with a girl you were attracted to? Okay, that probably happened when I was... 24 or 25 and uh, she was actually just like turning 18 she was 17 turning 18 which for me in many ways I felt kind of like I had missed out on all that entire part of my life so the age part you know didn't bother me at all I actually thought it was kind of cool and the funniest thing is I had like I started to do some of the right things and it wasn't a coincidence that I had got her because after going through all that stuff from beforehand, one thing I had realized was helping a girl with her homework will not get her attracted to you. Being there for her all the time um, in and of itself will not attract her to you. So I felt almost like I had been used because I was so good to this other girl back in, I'm in high school that, and I, she had used me so badly, although I, I acknowledge that I had totally opened myself up to it, although I was ignorant of the fact, but I was. I was totally inviting all the abuse. 